God has touched you already, but you may be seated. And then there is Pastor Rob. Um, yes, and then, that's right. Are you ready for the and then? So Pastor Rob, come on up. We've so appreciated your ministry. Let's give him a clap and open up our hearts and our ears. Thank you, Pastor Norma. Praise the Lord. Well, you know, sometimes people sense the presence of God in various ways, but uh, often they're unaware that God is there all the time. He's present. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. I'm here all the time. And... Um, I'm, I'm not a great one for lots of emotion, personally. Uh, that doesn't mean to say I don't, that I look down my nose at any, anybody else who's experiencing emotion. I'm um, simply that this, this is the way I'm wired. But, you know, I believe the presence of God is with us all the time. And if I feel it, that's good, that's a plus. If I don't feel it, I know he's there because that's a promise. And so to, this morning, I, I just want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to just let the presence of God, let the, the holy anointing oil of the Holy Spirit just flow. You know, the Bible says um, that it flowed down upon the beard, even right down to the to the hem of his garment. Some people say that was his beard that was right down to the hem of his garment, but that the anointing oil. And the anointing oil's on you this morning. The anointing. And, and you can step into that. You can consciously, consciously say, the anointing is upon me. Let's all say it together. The anointing is upon me. Because you see, the Holy Spirit is in you. And the Holy Spirit is is wanting you to experience Him all the time. And there are times when, when everything's going wrong and everything's out of order and it's just all clashing and clunking and everything else like that. And you can say, the anointing is with me. The anointing is with me. He hasn't gone. He didn't sort of say, oh, this is too loud. This is too, this is too uh, you know, confusing. And I'll just step back and, and let them deal with it. No, he's there to deal with it with us. Yeah. And so this morning we're, we're talking about freedom to hear from God. And I, I want you to know that you have freedom. You have freedom. You can step into the presence of God at any moment you like. Yeah. It's a decision that you have to make. You see, God hasn't gone for a Tosca or something like that. He hasn't gone anywhere. He said, I'm staying here with you even to the end of the age. Praise God. And so we can uh, have that freedom to enter in and hear from God. It's not, it's not something um, that is, uh, um, shall we say, a novelty. It's something that God provides to everyone who will reach out and call upon his name. And we need to have that. God never stopped speaking to mankind. You know, I remember as a younger person, um, and that could be any time, couldn't it? That's a long time ago. Uh, but uh, people would say, you know, when Adam sinned, it, it uh, caused a separation. Yes, it did. But it didn't stop God talking to Adam. Yeah. It didn't stop God talking uh, to so many people because God loves your fellowship. He loves your fellowship. Down through the centuries, God sought for a people who would fellowship with him. And God spoke with Cain after Cain had killed his brother. You think that God would say, oh, no, I can't do this. I'm not going to speak to him anymore. No, God said, Cain, you've got an issue. 
How are we going to fix this? God is looking for that solution. And we, we need to understand there's nothing that you can do that will separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And uh, Enoch, you know, we don't hear a lot about Enoch, but the Bible says Enoch walked with God and he was taken. Somebody, I remember hearing him preach on Enoch and he said, Enoch was having fellowship with God. He was about 400 years old. And, and they were having such a good time, God and he talking and just fellowshipping. And uh, God said to Enoch, why don't you just come home with me? <laughs> and he did. And we need to appreciate that God is, is like that. He's wanting to have such wonderful fellowship with you. Now, I know sometimes our mind is telling us all sorts of things that would um, contradict the concept of having that sweet fellowship with God. But we've got to believe the word of God rather than our own feelings and emotions. God communicated well enough with Noah that Noah was able to build that huge ark. He never built anything like that before, but uh, he got it right the first time. Isn't that good? I'm sure he was glad about that, especially when it started to rain. And Abraham was called the friend of God. And, and we know when we read about these people that, you know, sin had stained their lives. And God wasn't interested in letting that stop his fellowship with mankind. And as I said earlier, Nothing that you could do can separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. And the blood of Jesus Christ is applied to us. You know, Lynn was speaking about that uh, eternal concept of the fact that God before the foundation of the world had, had said, you know, behold I come to do thy will, O God. Um, and then David picked it up and in time, and then Jesus picked it up and fulfilled it. But you see, in eternity, um, there's no time. And it's, it's hard for us to comprehend that. And we need to understand that um, Jesus, the Bible actually says uh, in one of the Gospels, in, he's quoting from Isaiah, and Jesus was saying, because, because I've died, he hadn't died yet, but because I've died, you can have life. You see, we, we have this concept of time which denies us of the presence of God, of the goodness of God. And God communicated with many people. Hagar, Ishmael's mother, discovered that God saw her God spoke to her and told her where there was water that she could give to Ishmael that he could live. And God guided Eliezer um, to get a wife for Isaac. And Abimelech, king of the Philistines, had a God dream. And God said to him, that woman that you've acquired, she's the wife of Abraham. You know, you're a dead man. And, and Abimelech said, wow, be merciful to me, God. I didn't know. He said she was his sister. And God said, well, he's going to pray for you, that guy that denied his wife twice. And, uh, you know, he's my man. Sinful though he is, he'll pray for you and you'll all, and your wives and your soldiers, wives and everything, you'll, you'll start having babies again because they all stopped having babies. And Isaac dreamed. God spoke to him. And in that dream, God reiterated the promises of God that uh, God had given to Abraham. Jacob had a God encounter and heard God speak to him. He wrestled with the angel of the Lord. 
And Joseph had a dream of his future in Egypt. And Pharaoh, oops, Pharaoh, how did he get in there? Well, Pharaoh had a dream of what God wanted to do to save that particular part of the world through this coming drought. And uh, the Bible is God's will and pur purpose for us. People sometimes say, it's so hard to read, I don't understand it. Well, don't worry, just read it. <laughs> read it out loud, ideally, or listen to it being read on, the, on your telephone so that you, because faith comes by hearing the word of God. And you see, the purpose of God is being revealed day by day, moment by moment. God will never contradict his word, the Bible. You know, if you get a revelation that contradicts the word of God, it didn't come from God. So that's why you need to know what the word of God says. Because when you know what it says, you'll recognize immediately, oh, that's not a word from God. In Psalm 119, verse 89, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. It doesn't change. God doesn't change and his word doesn't change either. And if he said, I love you today, he'll love you tomorrow. Don't worry. He's going to go on loving you and he's going to go on communicating with you if you will receive it. God is always talking to us. He's always talking. He's always got something to say. Sometimes... Um, I've had people, I've been going along the rows and I've pointed to somebody and I say, would you like a word, sir? And they look up and they say, well, if you've got something, God's always talking. He's always got something to say to us. And, you know, one of the most amazing things that he says to us, I love you. I care for you. I want you to know that I'm here for you. If God be for you, who can be against you? And we need to have that assurance. And it comes through the word of God that he's continually speaking. I love this passage in Malachi 3, 6. God doesn't change. And he said, the reason you, you sons of Jacob are not consumed is because I don't change. You broke my covenant your fathers broke my covenant. Your grandfathers and all those ancestors of yours, they broke my covenant, but I'm going to keep it. That's the reason why my blessing is on you. Not because you're, you're sacrificing, not because of all of those things, but because I'm faithful to my promise. And God is saying, listen, give ear to me. Turn your ear to me. In Matthew 24, verse 34, it tells God's word will not pass away. And in Isaiah, um, I love this passage in Isaiah where God says, As the rain comes down from heaven and waters the earth. And he said, it will not, my word will not return to me without accomplishing that for which I sent it. Yeah. Which is the word that he sent? It's in the Bible. And we need to hear God speaking to us through his word. We need to take hold of it. We need to apply it to our lives. And I, I'm running out of time, but I'm just going to give you a couple of minutes um, because I really want to get the message across to you this morning. God always speaks the truth and he never stops speaking. And Numbers 23, For God is not a man that he should lie nor the Son of Man, that he should repent. Has he not said it? Will he not do it? Or has he spoken? And will he not make it good? And then it goes on for good. You know, it's a wonderful passage of Scripture. If you've never read it, it's a good one to have a look, look at. You have looked Numbers 23, verse 19. Uh, it's a wonderful story. God is faithful. And even though the, that prophet um, it was trying to get him to line his pockets with gold, God spoke through him and said, I'm not a man that I should lie. I'm going to bless Israel. 
I'm going to bless this people because I've chosen them. The Holy Spirit came into your life and in John 14, verse 23, Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my Father will love him and we will come to him and make our abode with him. And in verse 26, I've jumped over a couple of verses, but I want to make this point. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance everything that I've said to you. You see, we need to read the word. We need the word in our life. And the thing that keeps us on, on beam, on, on the track that God wants us, is the word, the living word. The more we read it, you cannot overdose on the word of God. Jesus discerns Nathaniel's spirit, his coming towards Jesus, and um, Jesus um, saw what was going on uh, under the fig tree. Now, Jesus didn't physically see him, but in the spirit, he saw Nathaniel. You know, sometimes we see people in, the, in, a, in our mind's eye. Why am I thinking of that person? It's the Holy Spirit showing us that person. And we need to ask, why are you showing me that person, Lord? And he says, pray for them. They need your prayer right now. And, and we can pray. Lord, I don't know what to pray, so I'll just pray in tongues. And Jesus said, Behold, an Israelite in whom there is no guile. Nathaniel felt a bit like the woman at the well. He felt like Jesus had read his whole life. He was, he was flabbergasted. And, but you see, that impacted him. And we need, we need to be moving in this realm where we can tap into God. You see, he lives in us. And the Bible says we live in him. And we, we can tap into him at any moment. You know, sometimes when we're tapping in at first, uh, it seems a little strange, a little un, unusual. But as the more we do it, the easier it becomes to tap into God. Sometimes you feel like God is a million miles away. But he's there. He's promised. You've got to believe the word, not your feelings. And you can hear him. He can speak to you. And sometimes people say, oh, the heavens are brass. But they're, they're not. And they don't worry about the heavens anyway because God's right here with you. You don't have to go through the heavens. And I've heard people say, well, our prayers were just hitting the ceiling. Well, that's all right. Because the Holy Spirit lives in us. He can hear us. He doesn't need it to go through the ceiling. We need to refresh our minds so that we can know that there's nothing that can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Nothing. In 2 Peter, I love this scripture, um, verse 3, chapter 1, seeing that his divine power has granted uh, to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of him who has called us by his own glory and excellence. And then in verse 4, for by these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises so that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature. Turn to somebody and say, I'm a partaker of the divine nature. You see, God has, has given us his nature. And you see, the, the thing that stops us from enjoying and, uh, that experience of being a partaker of the divine nature are the lies the enemy tells us and we tell ourselves. I can't feel the presence of God, so, you know, nothing's going to happen. But I walk in the anointing. I walk in his presence. Because he said he'd never leave me. And that's his promise to say, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Peter 
has had a God moment revelation when he, um, Jesus said to him, who, who do people say I am? And Jesus, um, Peter said, you're, you're the son of the living God. And uh, Jesus said to him, blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. So you see, the Father who is in heaven is living in you and you in him, and there's no distance and there's no separation, and, and we live, and we can tap into the experience of God. You know, sometimes um, I, I've done a little experiment with people and said, let's lift up our hands into the presence of God, and as you do, just allow the presence of God to wash over you, to flow down on you, to completely envelop you. And, you know, as, as people do that, because they're thinking this is what's going to happen, it happens. But there could be somebody sitting in the back row somewhere saying to themselves, well, it's not going to happen for me. Well, that's it. You decreed it. But if you believe the presence of God is with you all the time and you can step into that. Under the old covenant, Moses wished that all the Israelites would prophesy. Under the new covenant, the Holy Spirit lives in us to communicate and enable us to discern to do God's will. You see, God wants to be your friend. He wants to have that fellowship with you. But he's not fussed because he dealt with all our sin at the cross. And if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There's nothing that's going to stop your fellowship with God. Step into it. Experience it. Have it. It's yours today, not tomorrow. We don't have to sing uh, five songs, take up an offering to experience the presence of God. He's here. He's in you. You're in him. And you can communicate with him. You can hear him speak. You don't need somebody else to tell you what God is saying to you. It's nice when that confirmation comes. But God is here. And he is speaking to you. Here. What he has to say for you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you, Lord, that you promised that you'll always be with us. You'll never leave us or forsake us. We thank you, Lord, that we can trust you to be true to your word. And Lord, I pray that this day your people may go out into the world around them, Lord, their world, with the confidence that they can hear your voice. They can see when you show them something. They can sense when you reveal things to them. So they are not separated from you. Nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Thanks, Pastor Norman.